I'm Virgil, I'm 31, originally from France. I'm looking now back at eight years of traveling. I'm located in northern Norway in Tromsø and I'm a Aurora photographer guide. I started traveling about yeah, eight years ago in May 2011. Um, I actually studied in Lithuania in England and had a little break in France and I did a big break to Australia for about two years. Um, I've done now 42 countries about. I'm not gonna list them because the, long, the list is a bit long. But uh, yeah, I've been to Asia, Africa, part of the, the US as well. Uh, and been focused now in the northern countries in Scandinavia. Um, I lived in total in seven countries. Uh, which are Australia, New Zealand, uh, lived in Greece, in Czech Republic, Finland, Iceland, Norway, uh, which brought me a lot of things. And um, yeah, I got into guiding thanks to a friend that I met in Australia in my second year of traveling, uh, who taught me a lot and uh, in the jungle in Australia. I fell in love with this place. That got me into uh, learning everything about it, all the snakes, the spiders, all the wildlife, which was absolutely amazing and uh, got me into uh, maybe starting to think about guiding and like help people to discover places and you know make connection with people. After a while I decided to change a little bit, try to find some outdoor or something like this, you know. So I decided to apply for a job as a guide uh, in Greece, which I got. And I worked there for six months, which was not the best company, but that actually helped me a lot because I trained myself a lot with the group control, with a lot of things. So it was really interesting actually to, to have this experience. And um, yeah, then I decided to go up in the north uh, to Scandinavia above the Arctic Circle. Uh, to try something a bit more challenging, to, kind of, to find some really cold weather, to find some cold temperatures, some harder conditions, which I got where I was getting snowmobiles. And uh, I then saw my first uh, Northern Lights when I was there, when I was really badly equipped with really bad equipment, with camera equipment. Uh, and I got a little bit frustrated about it because I discovered that Northern Lights was something I really loved. And uh, that in these last eight years of travels, I've always been into photography, uh, into trying to like uh, save these pictures of the world I have. Um, but I never had really yeah, good gears about it, so I decided to go a bit higher uh, and got into photography. And um, I'm now in Tromsø, in Northern Norway, and that's where uh, I basically spend most of my time going in the outdoors and photographing with better gears, of course, and improving my skills with about photography and meeting especially meeting amazing people that helped me a lot with, uh, with photography, uh, with yeah, developing my creativity and all this. So yeah, it's been absolutely awesome. And thanks to the people that I'm here right now. I realized that uh, scouting at daytime is really helpful to find good composition and uh, the good orientation. Especially when you're dealing with night photography, you know, uh, there might be some elements you don't really see in the darkness uh, or under the rush of the northern lights, for example and then I can match a place according to the intensity of the lights. Uh, for instance, choosing a foreground facing north on quiet nights uh, or choosing composition facing west uh, when I know that the aurora forecast announces stronger activity. You know. Then I usually point it uh, on the map and I come back to it at the right time to uh, be able to maximize my shots.
Um, I've been working with Virgil now. This is my second season out wandering out with him. Um, and I would describe him as one of the best guides that there is. Uh, all of our guests that go on tour with him, regardless of seeing the Northern Lights or not, they come back and they've had like the best night of their lives. But working with him is good. He's very thorough, very knowledgeable, and like the Arctic is in his blood, so. Virgil has really good group control and he has a very commanding presence. So when you're out on a tour with Virgil, he can bring everybody together no matter whereabouts in the world that you're from. Everybody can connect and discuss like, like he's very informative about the science behind the Northern Lights and he understands that some people like me, maybe science doesn't come naturally, so he can explain it in a way that is relevant for everybody. So I think as a guide, he's very good, but then as a people person, He's also kind of like a double good at both, yeah. I've told you a lot of things already about the atmosphere, uh, about where the lights come from, but we still don't know how they are actually made, yeah. So when these winds are bringing uh, these electrically charged particles, they're gonna come and enter into the ionosphere. When they come and they enter, these winds, they come like this, right? They're not gonna enter toward our ge uh, geographic north. They're gonna enter toward our magnetic north, which is a little bit tilted on the side. It's probably here. It's always a bit tilted like this, yeah. Uh, so when they enter, they're gonna try to go toward this point, actually. When they go toward this point, they burn really high in the atmosphere, as I said, so they're gonna burn maybe here. So if they burn here, 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 and then it creates this bow around our planet. The green color is the one you see when oxygen is an activity, right? Because oxygen is one of the most spreaded one. Oxygen is about, I would say, 150 or 200 kilometers up to 350, okay? Sometimes you have red. Red is oxygen as well, but it's way higher. So it's maybe 350 to 500. This is really uh, seen in Antarctica or in Alaska as well. I've rarely seen them here in the Arctic, in northern Norway. When the northern lines are getting crazy, when you start to have really fast shaping, that's when nitrogen is an activity. And usually it's because when this wind are entering, they have more impact so they can go lower onto the, the atmosphere. So the nitrogen happens actually a bit lower in altitude, which is probably between 90 kilometers and 150. And when it's hitting, it hits this purple color or pink color or blue color sometimes. And that's when you get these really fast movements. Um, so originally I started traveling. Why did I start traveling? I think the main reason is because I got scared. Um, I got scared of uh, the commitment that I would, could have at home. So I was studying for two years after my high school degrees and then I did one year uh, at university where all my courses were in English and I did a big loan at the bank and uh, I don't even remember the amount. Um, but uh, after this semester I did at university, I left abroad in Spain for two months for an internship. Uh, and when I got home, I realized how much money I actually asked to the bank. And I have to say that really scared me because I really felt that I was gonna go in there until I'm 40, you know? And like, I realized that I didn't want to do this, you know? I didn't want to spend my life um, until I'm 40, 45 to just give money back to the bank and be stuck where I am, you know? I would kind of be free, you know? Like, that's what I was looking for. I tried to find what I loved, my passions and all this, and yeah, that's the best thing I've ever done, yeah. And I have to say that uh, I can't even thank enough my parents for not pushing me because my father was kicking me out uh, to try to motivate me and my father was dragging me back <laughs> to try to keep me in the nest. Uh, but uh, both of them were super understanding and uh, yeah, I, I can only say a massive thank you for this. So in Tromsø the weather conditions can be really complicated because we are on the coast. Um, so usually temperatures are way higher, uh, more precipitation. So we've got maybe some like zero degrees here and you move inland maybe about, I don't know, like 100 kilometers and it drops to like minus 20, minus 30. 
So it's really important, I think, to be really well equipped and to have the good gears uh, with you all the time when you go out. Sometimes the weather is a bit, uh, a bit tricky, it's a bit hard to go any further. And tonight is a perfect example of what we're having. We are having a snowstorm here. Uh, we're planning on going to Finland, it's not gonna happen tonight. So we're gonna turn around, probably have a beer or something, I think. And uh, yeah, keep this mission for tomorrow, eh? Um, I don't really get homesick that often, but uh, yeah, what I feel when I go home and I see my friends, that's almost what makes me feel like, well, I should maybe sometimes get homesick because I forget, like, I don't want to forget the feeling of it, you know. Um, and I'm always surrounded by amazing people when I travel. I'm never alone. I'm always surrounded by amazing people at work, outside of work, wherever I go, wherever I stay for a bit of time, I always make connections with people that are absolutely amazing with the same kind of activity, doing outdoors, photography or anything like this. So I never really feel alone. Yeah. So we are Carl and Rob and we work here three years at the moment uh, as a Northern Light Tour Guide. And last year we met uh, Virgil over here in our work. And uh, actually we got married in this June, uh, but we were waiting for this special period of the year, actually just before the uh, polar night, because then the light is pretty, pretty awesome and it's like orange, pink sky during the day. And we actually asked Virgil to do it because we wanted somebody who has like fresh uh, point of view. We wanted to take some different kind of wedding shots, not the, the regular ones that everyone has, but more like um, nature shots. Not that the, the wedding, a couple is the most important thing in the photo, but all the nature, yeah? People and, uh, and nature together. So that's why we ask um, Virgil about it. Yeah, we saw uh, his photos, especially landscape photos, and uh, they are pretty awesome. So yeah, why not? Why not to try uh, to do it with him? So when we ask Virgil about that session, it was, um, yeah, he didn't agree at the first moment because he told us that um, he didn't do things like that before but it's kind of um, competition let me say um, we didn't do it as well yeah it was our first time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as well. I have a few uh, strategic points light check on the map okay. Uh, we have a few different areas. We have on the coast, we have in the south, we have inland, and we have toward Finland. Okay. Yeah. Toward Finland being the last option because it's far. It's about three hours one way to go there, so it's quite far. For tonight, when I check these strategic points I have on the map, I check on Ringvasoja, which is the northern part uh, of the coast, and I check on Whale Island, which is Valoya, on the west side of Tromsø. On Gvaloya it doesn't look super nice, but when I look on Ringvasoya I always take this point, Dothjord, which is on the top, uh, and I have Mikkelvika, which is a little bit more out, uh, exposed to the sea. So when I check these three uh, types of clouds, I can check, as you see, on Dothjord, and I can check uh, right here on Hansness. So Hansness, we have Dothjord here, Hansness is here, okay? When I check these two, we have a gap. We have a gap between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, we have about 12% low clouds, 40% low clouds, which looks quite right, and the hour before as well, maybe 60%. So that's gonna be a gap of about three hours, let's say. So if we could try to make it about an hour before, 
that would be awesome. It's about one hour drive from Tromsø to get up there. So this is like uh, the formation that I absolutely love, this thing. When you have like the rock formation and all this, blown by the wind, it looks awesome for photos, super cool. And we're gonna make a fire later with this. We're gonna start the fire. It's really good, it's super dry. So always keep it in there. Here we're in Lapland in Finland, sometimes it gets super cold. So to make a fire is actually really nice and it feels cozy, but sometimes it's really needed because you get cold. And you wait for hours, waiting for the lights to show up, and sometimes they just, you know, it takes two hours to show up, so you need an actual fire to keep you warm, you know. I think it's really important. So we're gonna go get the gears and make the fire. There's many techniques to make a fire and that's my technique. Maybe it's not the best, maybe people will say they have all the techniques that are better. I don't care, mine works. When I go by myself, I, I start to feel the same feeling, you know, of being alone again and to feel the feeling I had the first time uh, I landed somewhere and I was by myself and I was like, wow, now I need to deal with my own stuff, you know, like it's just me. I don't have my parents, I don't have my own friends. It's just me and myself, you know. So that, that's the feeling I absolutely love when I go and shooting alone. You know the thing that I think is awesome about uh, about like shooting at night, about trying to shoot the northern lights, is that you lose control, you know. You completely lose control. You have no control of the weather, you have no control of direction of where the lights are gonna come up. And I think this is mo massive motivation, you know, that every night you just go out and you can just like, you don't know what to expect, you know. You can push the luck and push everything, try to get everything sorted to be able to see what you want to see, but it's, you know, it's, it's unpredictable, you know. When you try to shoot the lights, which to me, which is amazing, is that you find a place you want, uh, you're with the people you want, or you're alone, doesn't matter. The only thing which is super important is that you found what you want to shoot, you know? You set up your foreground, you have the thing you want, you set up your middle ground, you know what you're facing, you know exactly what you want, and you feel so ready, you know? I think this is so amazing because you feel so ready, but you need to be so patient, you know? And it makes you eager, you know? You're like, come on, come on, when is it gonna come? Like, you know, like you're just waiting for it, waiting for it, you know? And the worst and the craziest thing is that when it comes, it, you get crazy because it comes bang out of a sudden. And you have it's just seconds, matter of seconds, to move your tripod, move your camera, and you, you never know where it comes from, you don't know the direction. So most of the time you change all your plans and it's, it makes you panic, you know? And the rush of adrenaline every time I do this and every time I go to a different place makes me absolutely like feeling crazy, you know. Because you wait for it for ages, you feel so ready and when it comes you are completely out of control. You don't have the control of it at all. And to me this is, this is what keeps me so motivated and so much into this passion is because you, you don't know. You don't know anything about it. You know how you can get to it but you don't know what's gonna happen, you know. when I when I come here and visit you that um, these days a lot of people are are living um, this Instagram life and they have 
one or two moments like this in the year and then they show it off and you know um, get their likes but when I come here and see your life and you are living this life every single day every single day you have this bonfire you watch the stars you have auroras coming I think that's that's really amazing I often get asked uh, how, like, what's, the, what's my favorite place while I've been traveling in the last eight years. It's a really hard question to say. There's not one place. I would, I would always have a top three, uh, which would be probably Japan for the culture shock. It's quite intense and quite good. Uh, Svalbard in the really tip up there, close to the far north, uh, because it's really wild. It's incredible. Um, and Iceland because it's absolutely incredible landscape and uh, winter is amazing, spring is amazing, autumn and like summer, everything is amazing. Weather is challenging, but uh, the place is small on the map, but once you get there, it's absolutely huge. So it's really good opportunities for photography.